Good morning, Clay Chalkville, and welcome to our fifth episode of Keeping Up with Clay Chalkville. Let's take a look at the City of Clay's Fall Festival. What's up, Clay Chalkville? This is your latest community spotlight. Two Fridays ago, on November the 2nd, Clay Chalkville High School hosted the second annual Clay City Fall Festival. The event took place from 6 to 8 p.m. on the CCHS football field, a place familiar and comfortable to everyone. There was everything from bouncy houses to inflatables to give the kids a great time. There were hay rides, a photo booth, and a carnival booth set up for everyone to have a turn at. As an added bonus, there was a small but spectacular fireworks show at 8 o'clock. At the festival, there were about 30 vendors and 13 churches present who also sponsored this event. My name is Polly McClure, and I got a Faith United Methodist Church, and we're here at the Clay City Fall Festival tonight. And it's really important for the community to give people a chance to come out and to gather and to have some fun, free family fun. And we're really excited to be able to offer this to the community, and we hope that this is an ongoing thing and only gets bigger every year. Five different organizations provided food for everyone to enjoy at no cost. A popular favorite was the fried Oreos. In addition to the food, the Clay Chalkful Band, Color Guard, Dance Team, and Cheerleaders made guest performances. Other local groups, such as the Middle School Cheerleaders and Dance Team, along with Beverly's Dance Girls, performed. This event was more than a night out. It was a chance to strengthen the bond of this community. It allowed people the opportunity to meet city leaders and other people within the community. As we all know, it takes a village. On that village, we will continue to grow as people and as a community. Next, let's see what Clay Chalkville is thankful for. Hey Clay Chalkville, so um, Thanksgiving is coming up and so y'all want to know what all we are thankful for. One thing that I'm thankful for, of course, is family, friends, things like that. But I'm thankful for the opportunity to serve. I love being able to serve my students and serve this community. And it's just a great feeling to be able to help y'all and to give back every day. I'm thankful for my friends and my family. <laughs> and Jesus Christ, and um, a roof over my head, and food to eat, and shoes on my feet. <laughs> thankful for my family, I'm a great, wonderful family, but most of all, I'm thankful for God's blessing and God's love on my life. Um, I am thankful for my life and my family and all the blessings that I've gotten so far. I'm most grateful for just the people in my life, for my husband, my family, friends, co-workers, and the students I teach. I think that what makes life great is people, so I'm most grateful for the people in my life. Not only am I thankful for my child, I'm also thankful for my 150 children that I have here at Clay Chalkville. Now we have an appreciation video dedicated to our CCHS staff. It takes a lot of people to run a school, teachers of course being the key component, but without lunch ladies, bus drivers, or janitors, our school would not be able to function. Often, however, these people do not receive the appreciation they deserve. Well, we here at CCN TV would like to say thank you to those hard working people. I get here at 7 o'clock. As soon as we get here. Thank you. 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 Thank
<laughs> it's the kids and, and those that, that really act like they appreciate it. Yeah. Hello, my name is Clarence Campbell, head custodian here at Clay Chalkwell High School. I am now a cougar. Uh, my favorite thing about being a janitor is just making sure that the health and the cleanliness of this school is, uh, is well taken care of. I treat it like it's my home. Really, I've always worked with kids. I, I, I worked with smaller children for, since I was 18 years old and I wanted to work with older kids, so I, that was my way of doing that. I love my interaction with the kids. Uh, matter of fact, some of us have our own little handshake. So, you know, it's just fun. Let's take a look at the top four moments in Iron Bowl history. The Iron Bowl, one of the biggest games that Alabama has been going on for years, but how many years to be exact? The first game was played on February 22, 1893 in Birmingham, Alabama, 125 years ago with Arvin winning 32-22. Since then, the Iron Bowl has been one of the well-known events in the state of Alabama. Today, we want to highlight the top four moments in the Iron Bowl. At number four, we had a run in the mud on December 2nd, 1967. Leading field was packed with both Alabama and Auburn fans who braved the severe conditions to witness the mud bath. Ken the Snake Stabler managed to slip loose from Auburn defenders and slosh his way 47 yards for a tied touchdown to win the game. This is one of the late, great Paul Bryant proudest moments. At number three, we had a championship drive. USA Today said, some might say this was the game that started Alabama's dynasty run. Everyone expected Alabama to win, just as the rest of us still do today. However, on November 27, 2009, Arvin had the upper hand against the number two ranked team in the country at the time. Arvin had to lead the entire game. But with quarterback Greg McElroy at the helm, he would not stand to take an L that night. McElroy began the drive with eight minutes remaining with the help of star running back Trent Richardson and star wide receiver Julio Jones. Drove the ball down the field to end it with a touchdown pass to wide receiver Roy Upchurch for the game-winning four-yard touchdown. At the Newman 2 spot, we have the Cam Newton comeback. On November 26, 2010, Arvin had Superman on their side. But, but most of us know him as Cam Newton. Anyway, Alabama had Arvin's quote-unquote Superman stump for an entire half with Alabama leading by an astonishing 24-0. We don't call him Superman for no reason. In the second half, Cam Newton threw threw for three touchdowns and ran for one as well, with Arvin defense holding Alabama offense to only three points into the game with the score being 28 to 27. At the number one spot we have the kick six. You know what, just roll the clip. Alabama fans, you might just want to turn away for this one. Chris Davis is gonna drop back into the end zone in single safety. Well, I guess if this thing comes up short, he can field it and run it out. All right, here we go. 56 yarder, it's got, no, does not have the leg. And Chris Davis takes it in the back of the end zone. He'll run it out to the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45. There goes Davis. Oh my God. Davis is gonna run it all the way back. Auburn's gonna win the football game. Auburn's gonna win the football game. He ran the missed field goal back. He ran it back 109 yards. They're not gonna keep him off the field tonight. Holy cow! Oh my God! Auburn wins! Auburn has won the Iron Bowl! Auburn has won the Iron Bowl in the most unbelievable fashion you will ever see! I cannot believe it! 34-28! And we thought a miracle at Jordan Hare was amazing! Oh my Lord in heaven! Chris Davis! This has been a recap of the top four moments in Iron Bowl history. We cannot wait until the game this year. Who you got? I got R. Now let's take a look at the hard work and dedication of the band and the color guard. Everyone wants to try. Everyone wants to do their best. I was always looking up for other people, and now they're looking up at me. Because that's a big part of it. We have a lot of fun, but at the same time, we get stuff done. Being on a team has taught me just about trusting others and being a part of a family.
Valley Chalkville has seen many people come and grow throughout the school's history, whether it be students, teachers, or coaches. But one program that has remained a constant fixture throughout the community is their marching band. While the band is directed by the respective teachers, the individual section and auxiliary groups are student-led. I'm Courtney Ray, I'm a senior. Um, I've been drum major for two years here at Clay Chalkville. I'm Bobby, I'm also a senior and I've been drum major for one year. It was figuring out what we could do to best benefit the band and how we could put our services in and what the best outcome would be. And for a drum major, you have to be a very special kind of person. You have to be able to get to people. You have to be able to um, know people in order to see what way works best for them to learn and to grow. Uh, it's a lot of pressure, especially at first, but you just have to get used to it and know that everybody's watching you. I know I could be a good example because I always do everything right and try to do my best. So I try to be a good example for others. It's a matter of understanding that you'll be in the public eye more than anybody else and being okay with that. Being able to know yourself well enough to be like, I can handle this. Knowing that people are watching you and looking up to you and watching your every move makes you want to work harder and be better and be the best you can be. It's a good feeling to have. I remember when I was a freshman, I was always looking up at other people and now they're looking up at me. So it's kind of cool how it comes back around. Yeah, it makes you want to set a good example that much more. While the band gives you the musical aesthetics, the next two groups work hard in order for you to have a visually exciting halftime show. Hi, my name is Laura Fikannon. I'm captain of the Color Guard and I play French horn in symphonic band. Um, I'm Kennedy Day. I'm a junior and I'm dance line captain. To be in the Color Guard, you need to be hardworking, ready to work really quickly because we learn all of our work pretty fast, um, reliable, and have a lot of endurance. You've got to be a fun person. You've got to know when to be serious and when to laugh because that's a big part of it. We have a lot of fun, but at the same time, we get stuff done. Um, it's definitely a lot of pressure. I just want to make sure that I'm always a positive influence in everyone around me, and that I'm setting a good example for other band members and Color Guard members. I can talk to more people now. I'm not used to just my friend group uh, have ventured out and I can talk to any kind of person now, I think. Um, from being in the band, I've learned obviously how to play the French horn, um, how to read music and understand music theory, um, learn how to sight read music. Um, in Color Guard, obviously I've learned how to twirl a flag and toss a rifle talk to everybody and like I said earlier not just stick to yourself and your usual friend group because that'll help you survive and make more friends if you can be nice to everybody. Band and Color Guard can be a lot of fun if you're dedicated and you care about it. We're trying so hard to work towards a common goal and it's really just inspiring to see a group of kids want to do something that bad. Yeah, being in the band, it's a lot of hard work. Like, people don't realize how much we have to practice, like, all the time, every week. Marching band is a lot more than you think it is. Don't ever talk down to marching band kids. We go through more than you know. And that's us. <laughs> And band boosters. Bless the band boosters. Oh, yeah. Shout, out, Shout to out to the band boosters, the band boosters for doing what we can. Oh. We have Sarah's hometown history. Many have known Clay Chalkville Middle and High as a school their whole life, but for two families, this land was their home.
Before this land housed our middle and high school, it was once a farm. I can remember as a kid helping my grandmother out in the fields. We would pick peppers and um, she would be out there, it seemed like, for hours and I couldn't last very long, but I would help her pick the peppers and I would have it all over my hands and then I would rub my eyes and then I'd have to go to the house. So I wasn't much of a help, but I can remember doing that when I was a kid and um, seeing them working really hard out in the field. Um, we had this old barn right next to my grandmother's house and it would be filled with just all kind of farming stuff, bushels full of vegetables that they would bring in after a, a hard day's work. And then later on when I got older, um, I was set to go to the high school the first year that it opened and I was on the first color guard team and so we were all really excited about the new school being built. We were picking the colors and the mascot and there was voting and the whole town was just really excited that the new school was coming and um, a lot of us were sad because we were being split up from Hewitt and a lot of our friends that we had grown up with um, but it was mostly excitement and so then they began plowing getting rid of all the vegetation and everything and turning over the dirt and so instead of looking out the window and seeing the pretty fields you would see all this heavy equipment and and then it was just like that the school was popping up and and then I can remember it was the first day and it was just mostly excitement mostly excitement the, the whole town rallied around the new school and um, we were excited to wear our silver and blue and um, football games and and then all of a sudden it was just like it was always there. Michael and Francesca Amara owned a farm on the side the middle school is on. They had a beautiful farm where they raised eight children and grew vegetables to sell for the clay community. They also had many grandchildren and great-grandchildren who made many memories growing up on the farm. Well, when we were little, we pulled weeds. And when they would say go out and pull weeds on a row of a row of tomatoes, we were talking like from this side of the middle school to the very other side of where the high school was. And you did that all day. But they sold their produce. He took it to market. People from Clay went and bought it. He had people who actually came all the way from Mountain Brook, Vestavia, because he would grow fava beans, which we called them fives, but they were fava beans, and they would come from that far to buy them. So he, we washed. When Papa would bring in turnip greens or green beans, whatever it was he brought to the barn, he had these big, huge tubs, and I forget what they call them. They had numbers. No, they had numbers. The big 10. Tubs. Wash barrels. Yes, and we washed everything from one barrel to the next. And we were little, and we did this for many years. The Amaras sold their land on March 20th of 1994. Tragically, Mr. Amara passed away due to a drunk driving incident, but Mrs. Amara lived out most of her lasting days on a small house on the land. As far as the high school, built in 1999, this was a new place for learning for students. But before it was a place of learning for students, it was a place of learning for Mrs. Thelma Reed. Previous owner of the land Clay Chapel High School was built on. Mrs. Reed wrote a letter to the first senior class explaining that before they began learning here, she learned to be a good wife and mother to her family. Next we have the Try Not To Laugh Challenge. <laughs> okay. Stop, bro. I ain't even started yet. I stopped laughing, bro.
<laughs> it is Wednesday, my dudes. Oh, damn. <laughs> Do y'all see what he got on? Swamp. Okay. <laughs> that one, that one, that one. Hi, I'm Renata Bliss, and I'm your freestyle dance teacher. <laughs> you love me, you love me. Other guys will just speed your line, but I'll take you to Mickey D's. <laughs> 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 but that was funny, but I just couldn't stop, bro. In honor of Veterans Day, let's take a look at a Clay Chalkville veteran, Mr. Hickman. Stephen Hickman. Oh, I enrolled in the Army because I've always wanted to uh, serve my country from a very young age. I felt like I wanted to do something either related to history or the Army. Uh, and the Army actually helped me pay for college. I was able to get an ROTC scholarship. And so I went to Auburn on that scholarship. And then I was in the Army while I was at Auburn and after I graduated. Yes, actually, uh, at that point when I was in college, I was thinking I would make the military a uh, full-time career, and, and that's what I would do. Uh, teaching was always kind of in the background. I come from a long line of teachers. So I'm like a fourth generation teacher in my family. Uh, but active duty military was my first choice. Okay, I visited, I've lost count. Um, I don't know, I'm over 20 plus countries, but now for the military, uh, none of those were official military trips. Uh, I was stationed at Fort Knox, Kentucky, uh, Fort Lewis, Washington, uh, and spent some time at Fort Bliss, Texas, uh, all in the United States. Uh, I would say do it. Uh, it's a lot of people that I talk to think, well, I can't do the military because I can't handle basic training. Basic training is mostly mental. It's, it's very tough physically, but if you are mentally tough, anyone at this school could do it. You just have to go into it knowing, hey, this is my pathway forward. This is gonna give me opportunities for college or for employment uh, or for skills. And just know that uh, basic training is not that long and you can get through it if you're mentally tough. So my advice would be go for it. Don't let anything hold you back uh, from um, thinking that you can handle the military. And certainly you'll get lots of skills that will help you in life, whether you stay in full time or whether you get out after your commitment is up. Sure, first priority is something that we've started this year. We've had first priority at Clay Chalkle in years past, I think, um, well before I got here, uh, and they had a pretty good, uh, pretty good group going. But we've started it back this year. It's a non-denominational uh, group of kids that come together on Tuesday mornings at 7:20 in the library, and we just have a time of worship and praise. We have student-led uh, music, and we just worship the Lord, and then we have a, a speaker come in and give a very short devotion, just kind of a focus your day on, on God and our own some word of, of wisdom 
for the day. Sometimes it's a, it's a youth pastor from a local church. Sometimes it's a student. Uh, and then myself or, or some other teachers speak occasionally. But it's just a great, great opportunity once a week for students to come together, um, fellowship with one another, worship with one another, uh, and focus on some positive things and, and get some words of encouragement to deal with all the many challenges and obstacles that teenagers face in today's world. So I would love to see many, many, many more students come out on Tuesdays at 720 and join us with First Priority. Thanks for tuning in to our fifth episode of Keeping Up with Flight Chalkville. Have a happy Thanksgiving.